Hello, my name is attorney Jason Lyle, and I am a wills, estates, and trusts attorney here in Northeastern Oklahoma. And if you haven't seen my other videos on living revocable trusts or pour over wills, I'd encourage you to watch those. But I'm going to move on with this video in, with the third and fourth other types of documents that I encourage people to have when they come to me to do some estate planning. And those would be powers of attorney. Specifically, and this is just my preference, I find it to be the cleanest way to do it, is um, a general durable power of attorney and a medical power of attorney, okay? Um, and we'll add the fifth type of document too because that's not, uh, doesn't deserve its own video, it's a small thing. So a general durable power of attorney, what is it? You may have experienced a problem in your lifetime where let's say you're married or you have a roommate or something like that or a partner and you need to call the cable company because you want to cancel HBO or if that's even a thing anymore, you want to cancel Netflix. So when you do that, the bank, the cable company, the car company, whoever you're dealing with may say, you're not in the account, sir or ma'am, and we cannot talk to you. Uh, they're very serious about that. So one thing that you can do to help somebody else conduct all of your affairs in your place if you're incapacitated, or even if you want them to do that right now and just have some help um, while you're not incapacitated, is a general durable power of attorney. It literally gives somebody else the power to do the things that you would do with your affairs. Um, most of the time, that's if you're incapacitated, but sometimes people draw them up and just say, no, I just want somebody else to be able to handle my affairs if I ask them to, okay? The second type of document that you need is a medical power of attorney, and it is what it sounds like. It allows somebody to make medical decisions for you, and in this power of attorney, we put any wishes that you might have that are specific, okay? Um, because let's face it, if you're incapacitated and um, you need somebody to help you make decisions, then it's useful to designate somebody so that it doesn't just default to whomever. Um, or the doctors um, having no guidance. Because if the doctors have no guidance, they will do everything in their power to keep you alive, depending on insurance and resources, etc. And the very last document that I encourage people to have, uh, which isn't always separate from a medical power attorney, but certainly can be, is simply a living will. Um, it's kind of uh, deceptive to call it a will. It's, sing it's a short document that just says whether or not you want things like artificial food, hydration, resuscitation, and if you've ever met anybody who's been resuscitated and is in a vegetative state or paralyzed or on a ventilator or anything like that, if you do not want that to happen to you, or let's say you do want all of the efforts that could be made medically to save you, then you need to put it in a document. Um, hospitals hand those out, but I like to put them together with a package along with the living revocable trust, the power of attorney, the medical power of attorney, the pour over wills, and that so that they're all in one place. It makes it convenient for the next person to take care of you to find them all. If you have any questions about this or any other estate planning issues, please feel free to contact me. My name is Attorney Jason Lyle. Thank you. Have a nice day.